Tyler. Tyler, I'm over here. Don't feel bad, professional cameraman. I have on my wear camo hat. You wouldn't have seen me if I hadn't have told you. But thanks for joining us on this week's Steam Culture. You know, a few years ago, we shot a great series of episodes on trees. Well, not exactly just trees. The things that trees produce, like notebook paper, paper towels, poopy paper, stuff that everyone was buying at the start of the coronavirus epidemic. Remember that? Yeah. Well, these products come from these guys. Look at the size of that tree. This is phenomenal. Well, we're going to start the series off with episode one of kiln drying. Well, these trees get harvested, turned into hardwood, and they have to be dried before they can make things we use all the time, like baseball bats and, and cabinets and furniture. Well, we're going to show you today how steam helps dry that hardwood faster than just air drying. So I hope you enjoy these episodes. Stay tuned for Steam Culture. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Steam Culture. We're on site this week. I'm very excited. The topic this week is using steam in the lumber drying operation. So I'm here with our friend Tom Thompson at Salem Hardwood, and it all starts in the boiler room with the steam. So, Tom, tell us what you're burning in the boiler. Uh, sawdust, green sawdust and dry sawdust. Okay, and the sawdust comes from? Scrap wood. Okay, so kind of cool. It's, uh, it's a resource that's already being used in the plant, so instead of wasting it, We'll burn it in the boiler. So what sort of pressure would this boiler run at? Uh, we run right around 110 pounds of pressure. Okay. 110 100, PSI. 110 pounds of pressure and we're sending the steam? Out to the kilns. Okay. Out to the kilns. So we're going to go follow the trail out to the kiln. Come on. Okay, so we've been in the boiler room and now we're working our way to the kiln, but we just walked past this. This is what is going in the kiln, all this lumber behind us. So. Uh, Tommy, what kind of lumber do you guys work on? Uh, mainly red oak, white oak, ash, hickory, walnut, poplar. That's a, that's a bunch. Yep. And this is all for? for flooring. For hardwood flooring. Hardwood flooring. All right, so if you have hardwood flooring in your kitchen, that might be your floor cabinets, right there. Cabinets. Or cabinets. Go out and buy some cabinets and some flooring. All right, let's go work our way down to the kiln. Okay, so here we are. We are now at a kiln that's being loaded. This is Almost loaded. I guess this is one more. Yeah, one more row comes in here. Okay. And then they get right around 70,000 feet in here. They close the doors, turn it on. Steam starts coming through the coils. Uh -huh. The coils heat up and the fans come on and then start pushing the air one direction. And when it gets up to a certain temperature, it'll go back another direction and keep reversing and going forward until it gets all the moisture out of it. It runs about 160 to 190 degrees okay. to get the moisture out. Now how long how long will that run? Like how will you know when it's dry? It's Enough. got it's all computerized, it's on a program. Uh -huh. And usually about 70 hours. 70 hours. Yeah. And how how much lumber is in here? 70,000 feet. 70,000 feet, yes. 70 hours. That sounds like a formula yeah. to me. So I noticed the way the lumber is stacked up. This is to let the air, these sticks are put in here to let the air go through it so it can dry it. Okay from inside out. So what would happen if, um, let's say we took the lumber out early and it was too... It, it would crack. Too, it would crack. It would crack. Okay. It would bust and then it'd be junk. Awesome. All right, guys, we have so much good information, we don't want to cut anything out. So we're going to do this segment in two pieces. So next week, we're going to go to the back of the kiln and we're going to take it through the finished product. I'll see you then.